um, for the Chavis Memorial Park Interpretive Plan. My name is Luke Wallenbeck and I'm the project manager for the Parks Recreation and Cultural Resources Department. And I've been um, the point person for the department on this project. Um, this is the last of our public meetings. We had two previous um, meetings. Um, one was like this on Zoom and another was a pre-recorded meeting with some opportunities to provide comments in person at the community center. Thank you for bearing with us as we've tried to um, do our best to manage how to engage with the community during this, this um, difficult time. And, um, but uh, tonight we have our consultant team here and they're gonna walk us through the draft plan and the schematic design for the first, um, first phase exhibit design. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm excited to show the, um, the project where it is today. You'll notice maybe some smaller uh, refinements and improvements in the plan. And also we have some new things to show as well that um, you may not have seen before. Um, at the end of the talk, we'll talk about what is coming next um, in the process, but we'll save that for the end. And in the meantime, I'm going to pass it over to Julia to um, continue the presentation. So with that, Julia, go ahead. Thanks, Luke, and thanks everyone for being here tonight. So you'll see in the plan, I'm going to flip through it, that we have a full and complete plan tonight to share with you. Uh, so the table of contents, for those of you who may have seen versions of this before, is now here, um, as is an executive summary that outlines the high points of the entire plan. I'll talk a little bit more uh, later in the plan about uh, the site plan that you see on the right there, the larger, more detailed version of that. Uh, the plan and foundation. This section of the plan really outlines a little bit about the park and the purpose of this plan, which is really to define interpretation within John Chavis Memorial Park. So that is both the messages that visitors receive when they visit the park, but also the means and methods by which those messages might be communicated. We've taken guidance from the previous uh, master planning effort, and this section of the plan also outlines the, the initial goals that were outlined in that plan, as well as the vision for the park. Uh, and then there are some other recommendations from the master plan related to interpretation that are also outlined in this section. In addition, we've taken a look at the strategic implementation study, which was completed after the master plan. Uh, and incorporated those thoughts into uh, our process as well. Um, there's been a robust uh, public engagement process from uh, the first phase of work to the fourth phase. Uh, this gives you a little bit of information about where we are in the process and where we have come. So in the first phase, we did um, some initial research and community engagement um, that was largely completed uh, by the uh, beginning of November, I guess. And then phase two, we developed um, interpretive master plan and concept design, which is really the bulk of this document that we're sharing with you tonight. Um, and we've begun now phase three. Um, we met with the city's design review team um, last week. Uh, unfortunately, our advisory committee meeting needed to be postponed by a week. So we'll be talking with that group next week. And then we are, are tonight here at this public meeting and you'll see um, there's still a little bit more to do beyond that. Uh, section two of the plan really takes a close look at who uses the park. Um, the city defines uh, the use of the park as a two mile radius, but we understand that visitors come from a, a broader uh, cross section of Raleigh and the, and the southeast region of the United States than that historically and con in contemporary times. Uh, so this table really outlines the various visitor groups to the park. Uh, visitors represent wide age ranges, small to large groups, and local to regional audiences. We took a close look at um, nearby visitor experiences that may um, augment and support the interpretive work that uh, we are proposing in the park. And so this section of the plan outlines um, some of those things like the South 
Park Heritage Walk, um, the Walnut Creek Wetland Center that's south of the park, the City of Raleigh Museum, um, or Square, and then the Pope House Museum as well just uh, gives an overview of, of what those different venues are offering. Then we've defined visitor outcomes and there are five sort of big visitor outcomes um, and those are based on this table largely um, uh, that, that has come from public input um, and advisory committee input around what we want really visitors to think, uh, feel and do as a result of interpretation in the park. Section three outlines the interpretive messages, and um, these are really designed to uh, clarify the big ideas um, and focus the nature and scope of exhibits. So we understand that as these different design elements are further developed in the future, that additional content will be developed, but these are the really big um, sort of ideas that we like visitors to understand about John Chavis Memorial Park. So one of those big ideas is around who John Chavis was, um, an African American teacher, preacher, and revolutionary war veteran, so the park's namesake. Another is really the story of the park's development um, from the 1930s um, up to present really, but the park's period of significance as defined um, in its national registered designation um, goes up to 1964, which is, um, of course, when the Civil Rights Act was passed. Um, another big theme here is that the park has historically been a place to gather and celebrate for the Black community. Um, and all kinds of wonderful things happened here from um, the teenage frolics to homecoming parades to uh, football games, church revivals, uh, afternoon picnics. And so this piece uh, really brings to the fore this really important um, backyard and, and, and uh, front porch for the neighborhood. A legacy of service. Um, we found some really fantastic images um, in the uh, North Carolina State Archive of the tented camp that was adjacent to the park during World War II. And so you can see some of those new images here, um, one of, of planes flying over Chavis Heights. Uh, and, and the scope of that uh, tented camp is, is really visible in these images, just how large it was. There's a few more of these later in the plan and I'll, I'll call those out. But this really tells that story of um, the presence of soldiers in and around the park um, during and after World War II. And, and even beyond that, uh, the legacy of service of, uh, of the community um, in the armed forces. Athletics and athletes in the park. So there's a long list here of um, professional athletes, uh, amateur athletes who got their start as youngsters in John Chavis Memorial Park. And so this really celebrates uh, that piece of the story. Um, as well as the semi-pro uh, Rally Tigers who used to play in the park um, and at, all the way up to sort of little league uh, players in the park. The Nature in My Neighborhood uh, really centers on Little Rock Creek which runs through the park and um, all the, the creatures that live in and around that park. Um, it's, it's been broadened a little bit to also include uh, sort of a focus on backyard gardening and um, African-American foodways. Uh, the park has long been a place where, where people have gathered for picnics and so that's celebrated here as well. And a little bit later in the presentation, I'll share some images of a community garden that we found that was actually across the street um, in Chavis Heights. Uh, I will now turn this over to Therese to talk a little bit more about the interpretive design and site map. Therese, I think you're muted. Therese, you're muted. Okay, so now I can say thank you, <laughs> Juliet, and nice to see everyone. And thank you for joining us. And so of the concepts, um, we're showing seven concepts uh, tonight. There's one more than before, which um, I'll be excited to talk about in a minute. 
Um, so just to repeat, our goal for these design concepts is to address the key themes developed for the park that Juliet has just been talking about. And we're looking to create a distinctive and comprehensive program that envelops the park in interpretive cultural and historical storytelling. So we'll go to the first one that uh, you've seen. So this is the John Chavis mosaic arch. Um, and we'll move to the next one here that we've added a second one. It's not developed yet, but we're looking at creating a musical gateway arch. Um, and this is speaking to the request by the advisory committee that they really wanted music to be celebrated as part of the memory of the park and part of the importance of the historic um, significance of the park over time. Um, we can go to the next uh, slide and then what I've added in here are design and fabrication guidelines to give a sense of what's going on here so that we could look at how big these were and the impact of construction. So the, the, gateway, the gateway arches are are 16 feet high by four people wide. And you can see that there'll be interior lighting. We will be using QR codes to go into deeper dives into the website. Um, the Music Memory Gateway um, includes an additional um, item and it has a sound system with controlled sound speakers to keep the sound into the core of the archway. Um, so that is what is going on with that. Um, next, next concept is the one that we're looking to build, and this is the segregation to integration exhibit. Um, go to the next page. We're looking at the reality of how big these are and how they come together, how they're placed. Um, they're 17 feet high by six feet wide. We're currently looking at the scale, location, and design documents now. Um, and in a little while, Juliet will talk about a timeline document that's part of this um, development of this exhibit. Um, the next concept here is part of the package are our memory respites. Um, so we'll go to the next page and you can see a little more information. Um, each are eight feet high by four feet wide by 10 foot deep. They each accommodate one to four persons per structure. And we've included adaptable furniture as suggested by um, some members of the advisory committee that it would be great to have uh, furniture to change into seating, lounging, and use as table services in, in a, a way that um, it, visitors can adapt. Um, we also will be looking at removable QR codes here. We want to include this constant ability to um, access for more information, but also this one maybe would have an upload where you can um, take a picture or make a memory um, recording of what your experience is at, at the park. Um, okay, then we'll go to the next one. Um, it's our nature in, in my neighborhood playscape. And we continue, let's, let's go to the next page where you'll see more information. Um, continuing the exploration of what shape we would like to have as a focal point for the playscape. And I'm looking at a honeycomb nature shape, which is eight foot high by nine and a half feet wide by two feet deep. And so it is a structure that's playful that somebody can get into. Um, and again, we would be showing the special features of the QR codes and dotted around the, um, the playscape would be various AR markers, which are those playful opportunities to start bringing the nature from the creek out onto your forehead or your hand or wherever you're playing with it um, in the escape to um, engage with nature. Um, our next uh, concept is the Athletics at Play Gateway. And if we go to the next page, that'll give a little more insight as to what the various sizes are, the highest one being 14 feet high, low is two feet. So we've got a variety of these um, animated block structures. So the features are rainbow colored athletic sketches we're using. It would have changing interior lighting occurring and approximately two um, interpretive panels which can focus on um, the text and uh, interpretive information. And then our last piece of the program 
are our story beacons. And we can go to the next page where it's further developed. And we're looking at doing an equilateral triangle shape, similar to the shapes that are making up our our um, mosaic gateways. Um, and then it would have the lighting strip at the top. Um, the features here would be, you know, large, so we use large scale graphics for long distance visibility, so super graphics uh, that cover the plinth. And then there would be ADA close viewing interpretive panels. And the structure we're showing is not a very big footprint. It's tall, but it's about 30 feet wide each side and then 10 feet tall overall. So that hopefully gives a little more enlightenment as to what these look like. Um, and then Three, if we go, if I, yes, interrupt, I think you meant to say 30 inches wide, right? 30 inches wide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, did I say 30? You said feet. So. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be really wide. That would be wide. Yeah. 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 30 inches <laughs> by 10 feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. <laughs> And then I guess we can go to the, we can talk about the interpretive site map and can we rotate this view? Um, thank you. Thank you, Juliet. So this should hopefully give you a better sense of where things, and you can see just by looking at all the color circles, that they're really moving all around the park. We have a lot of things going on and very much dispersed. So um, concept 1A is our John Chavis gateway and that's over here on the side of that entrance leading out. I think that entrance goes out to Cape Avenue. Is that correct, Luke? Yes. But it's, if I've got that right. Um, but okay, and then, um, Concept 1B is our new musical gateway down here, and it's located, I, we could also call it the Chavis Way Gateway, but that's where the musical gateway is. Um, concept 2, the segregation to integration exhibit that we're working on building now, is housed up here in the pathway leading out from the old carousel house. Concept 3, a place to gather and celebrate respites, is located down here. Um, Concept four is up over here, and that is our athletics at play trailhead facing out to the neighborhood and that side of the park, it's that side of the track, track and ball field. Um, then we have concept 5A. We have three, three of those um, story beacons. We have five, one up by the Legacy of Service, up by the War Memorials, War Mothers Memorial. 5B, Nature in My Neighborhood Interpretive Plinth over by the creek, and then 5C down over here near the carousel, and this would be um, the carousel story. And, and 6A would be Nature in My Neighborhood Playscape located below the new playground. Uh, 6B is the Nature in My Neighborhood Bridge, which would cross over the creek. Um, concept 7, um, is an idea for interpretive graphics inside the community center at the viewing window walls, which can start to, as people look out, you can start to point out an orientation, historical orientation of where things used to be as people are looking out onto this gorgeous new park. Um, concept eight is the future heritage plaza designed to come. So where do we wanna go next? Um, Julia, do you want to pick it up here with the talk about the content gu guidelines? Sure. Um, so we've developed some content guidelines. So as um, future content is developed for all of these various concepts, we'd like it to align with the outcomes and messages that have been identified in this plan. Um, we understand that it really needs to communicate visually as much as possible, um, given that a lot of people uh, process information visually. Um, we want to create some layers in it so that um, people can access uh, information in different ways, whether it be uh, on websites via QR codes or through audio, uh, as well as uh, text. Um, we want to follow the less is more principle, um, understanding that a lot of visitors won't spend uh, more than 30 seconds reading exhibits. And 
and some will spend a great deal of time, which uh, sort of points back to that creating layers. We want to have um, quick information for people who may only glance at these exhibits so that they get some of those big ideas, but also deeper layers for people who would like to dig in and learn more. Uh, we definitely want to prioritize inclusion and accessibility. And then we want to make sure that we're citing our sources for, for content, uh, given that the nature of most of these exhibits is based on um, the historical record. Um, interpretive programs and events. So this is a new section that we have to share with you tonight. Um, this section of the plan really outlines ideas for programming and events that would support interpretive outcomes in the park. And most of these ideas came from um, the advisory committee and city staff members. So I'll run through these. So we have a list of programs and events that would be designed for the general public. Um, the first of these is an annual park celebration. We understand that um, currently there's Chavis Park Celebrates, so it, it may just continue to be that, but it, it may um, take shape in a different way too. So we've documented that opportunity um, dancing in the park. Um, we understand the history of teenage frolics in the park. Um, and that from the oral histories that there was a jukebox in the park. And so we want to reintroduce uh, dancing in the park um, as well. We have a couple different kinds of tour ideas. One would be self-guided tours. So this may be something um, that would take shape as something you could access on your phone and you find different points throughout the park where you could learn more information. Uh, a docent led tour would uh, potentially be done by um, a staff member or maybe a volunteer who could at a certain time take a, take a tour around the park and tell, tell its story. Um, a history festival is another idea and as part of that um, we've come up with the idea of a history harvest where community members might be invited in to share their stories, photographs, and objects about the park. Um, uh, UNC's Southern Historical Collection um, supports um, underrepresented history keepers and so it, it may be that that program would be interested in cataloging these stories and uh, photographs and objects so that they could be shared more broadly uh, with the community there in Rodley but even beyond Raleigh. Um, concerts, we'd like to reintroduce concerts into the park, um, maybe ones that link to um, interpretation in that it could be something like music of the 1960s uh, food has always been a part of the park, and so um, maybe this might take shape as a farmer's market or different classes on um, canning or, or food ways, things like that. There could be an opportunity for pop-up exhibits. Uh, so this might be um, done in partnership with, with others, and you'll see that all of these ideas have potential partners, but um, maybe the city of, of Raleigh um, museum would, would do some kind of a pop-up museum that would uh, be in the park for a couple of weeks and, and it would be about the history of the park. Uh, historical amusements festival. Uh, we understand that historical amusements have been a, a, a big part of the history of the park and so could that be reintroduced through some kind of a festival. Park stewardship day. Um, understand that one of the goals of interpretation is frequently to invite people to be stewards of the park and so giving them opportunities to do that in concrete ways might happen through a park stewardship day and then linking to that um, legacy of service story some kind of veterans day celebration uh, we know that Shaw University has ROTC and St. Augustine's also has a division of military sciences and so maybe those folks could be partners in some kind of a veterans Day celebration. Um, we also have identified some programs for seniors and adults. So we know there is a seniors program in the park already in the circle of friends. We'll talk here a little bit about um, how to support that group and, and maybe expand it. Uh, there could be history programs that were focused for adults as well as nature programs. And then for children, um, after school and summer programs could Link to interpretive themes, uh, so, so could uh, K through 12 school programs. Uh, and then of course there would be family focused programs that could happen as well, things like uh, Kids Nature Night, um, Story Time uh, in the park, things like that. 
And then uh, for young adults and college students, because of the proximity of Shaw University and St. Augustine's, um, athletics concerts and programs have, have uh, historically been held in the park by these institutions. And so providing opportunities to do that again. I mentioned earlier ROTC and, and the, the veterans uh, celebration. And then opportunities for service learning where um, college students can gain credit for uh, doing work in the park. And so those are um, the various ideas that we have for programs and events uh, moving forward. Section six um, is an implementation plan. And so this page um, outlines how these various um, exhibit concepts will be developed in the future. Uh, so the first step would be really to confirm the priorities, and we'll talk about those in a minute here. Uh, we would move through a process of design development where we uh, clarify the concept intent, we gather additional research and visual resources, we develop content, uh, and then we would move uh, through fabrication into installation and uh, be sure to develop maintenance plans as well so that these um, various elements are, are there for a long while. So page 53 uh, sort of slices and dices these concepts in, in a few different ways. So there are these phases that you see, and these are, are based largely on, on what we saw sort of as <clears throat> uh, things that might be sort of low hanging, hanging fruit, uh, the plinths that could be uh, maybe moved forward pretty quickly. And then some of the Phase four items are, are more complicated things that are maybe dependent on the master plan's full implementation. Um, those would be things like possibly a bridge over the creek, um, the Chavis Way gateway, which is the music gateway, couldn't be placed there until um, the building part of that happens. And so that's sort of how those phases lay out. And then these community priorities, we're going to um, ask you to weigh in on here in a moment. But these uh, initially were pulled from um, publicinput.com, some input we got there. And then these capital costs are really sort of scaled down here. And so I think it, I think we have um, a poll for you now. And uh, Inga, do you want to facilitate that poll? Uh, Inga, you're muted. We'll, be, we'll talk shortly about the segregation to integration uh, concept and exhibit more specifically, particularly with the timeline. But we wanted to ask you to uh, take a moment, uh, those of you who are participating, to uh, kind of rank the, the remaining concepts in terms of, of priority that you'd like to see next, given funding. Of course, funding will be a major driver, as Luke will tell you. Um, but if you had your choice, what are the next um, concepts that you, would, uh, that you would like to see uh, constructed and built? And we'll give you a chance to, um, and a moment to take, uh, to kind of put these in priority order, if you will. Inga, do you want me to keep going through the plan and then do the, the prioritization later? We can do that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, here are some more of those uh, wonderful images uh, that we found from the State Archive <clears throat> of the tented camp during World War II uh, in the park. Um, you'll see on this page, too, that we've um, begun to prioritize programming events. So things that would be a high priority, medium priority, and low priority for, for events in the park. And we'd also like to invite you, you to weigh in on this as well. Uh, which, which events would you like to see happen soon? Which do you think are very high priority and, and which could maybe wait, wait a little bit later or maybe you're not as interested in? Um, and then the the remainder of the plan is just the, the reference list and the list of participants uh, in the various committees uh, on this process. So with that, um, Inga, would you prefer to do the prioritization now or would you like to shift to the designs? 
Let's, let's um, shift to the designs and let the priority be last. Okay. Before, our, before we open up for discussion. Sure. So I flipped back to the segregation to integration page in the plan here. And uh, one of the things I want to know is that uh, we are developing a range of content op options for this uh, initial installation, which, um, as Therese mentioned, is the segregation to integration exhibit that would be near the old carousel house. One of the, the ideas that we have is um, to incorporate these oral histories that have already been gathered. And you can see some of the quotes here from those oral histories. And so we've already begun to pull uh, both short uh, kind of quotes that could be used as well as longer segments that you might be able to listen to via a QR code. So that's one aspect of, of what we're doing. Um, another aspect uh, is around this timeline. And so we've developed sort of a timeline of the park's development. And I won't read it uh, word for word here, but you can see that, you know, it sort of starts with the, the uh, lease of the land um, and, and then the construction of some of the initial pieces of the park, the oldest pieces of the park, um, when, when the carousel was, was there, uh, the grand opening in 1937. Um, the, and then the changing of, of the name or the decision on the name <clears throat> based on a, a community committee's input. Uh, and then, um, yeah, there's this, this piece about the World War II soldiers using the park, um, Raleigh baseball clubs using the park, uh, the miniature train when it was added to the park and the grandstands construction. Um, Teenage Frolic launched in 1958 and that was filmed from time to time in the park. Uh, there was a Korean War era um, Navy jet in the park for a while that was a feature for children to play on. Uh, documents when the new community center was built, um, new swimming pool, uh, the carousel, uh, the old carousel pavilion being remodeled and then sort of comes uh, up to the present if you will in terms of um, some of the recent planning that has been done, uh, the designation of the park onto the National Register, and then um, the, the park's revitalization through the um, construction that's happening now. Um, in, in tandem with the timeline, uh, we've identified a, a very um, broad image database, if you will. And I just want to kind of show you um, how big that is here in this in this right column and highlight a few of the images that, that we've uh, found as part of this process that um, will be used as all of these concepts are developed in the future. Um, so let me see if I can just kind of put my finger on some of the, the really kind of fun ones. Um, of course, these early images of parks, some of these are in the plan itself. Um, there's some of the park uh, neighborhood, uh, you know, sort of prior to, or right as the park was being built. So, so these are some of the images of what the neighborhood looked like around the park at the time of its development. Um, I mentioned earlier um, the community garden <laughs> that was uh, near the park. Some nice images of that. Um, the tented camp, I think you saw most of those in the plan, but um, just, just some really interesting images of, of that tented camp. Uh, the other really wonderful discovery was that there was a photo booth in the park at one point, and we have a few images from that photo booth. Uh, these was in the, in the plan, but you can see those are, are really nice images. Um, there was a Chavis Heights canning uh, class, so that's kind of interesting. Um, we've got some of the, the grandstand and um, The tennis courts here. Um, we've got some nice new images of the teenage frolic. Um, so these come from the Southern Historical Collection um, and are, are really nice images of J.D. Lewis, uh, a poster that may have hung in the park at one time, and then um, the actual dancing. Uh, let me see what else here. 
I guess the other ones uh, related to the, the frolic have come from um, capital uh, broadcast. So some nice additional images uh, from them. Some of these are more relevant to the park than others, but I thought you might be interested in seeing these. Um, there's some images of baseball games, um, Halloween parties. So I think um, with that, I will pause and uh, open it up to some, some input at this point. And we only have um, a couple of folks, so um, I'm going to just uh, open it up for everyone to um, to talk. And you can come on in and unmute yourselves if anyone has a, a feedback on where we um, what's been presented to date. Uh, Carol Love here. Yes, I really appreciate the additional things that you have. Uh, I'm truly impressed with the number of photographs. And uh, we've had several slideshows that we've put together, but you have far more than we've ever seen before. So using those in this uh, segregation to integration piece is going to be outstanding. I can hardly wait. Um, I, I agree. I was very impressed with the, some of those. You're very fortunate to have that level of historical um, information available. That, that's major. That says a lot for what this was all about and what the John Chavis Park and uh, what African Americans were doing in the city of Raleigh at the time. It's um, the historical memorial, memorial information that we have as major. I'm also impressed with the timeline because there's some things on there. We have several timelines that, that you've included that I wasn't aware. I'm not a Raleighite, so I've been gathering information for quite a while. Been here for a long time. Uh, with the timeline, will there be, you, you talked about the oral histories. Uh, will there also be uh, oral information on the timeline itself? Yes, ma'am. I think the idea is that that timeline will, we're, we're still kind of figuring out the logistics about where that will live, but I believe it will live uh, on the City of Raleigh's website. So it might be that one of the QR codes on the exhibit uh, links to that website where people could read that timeline. And what we would probably want to do is, is pepper that timeline with some some images so that people could could go to that website and see the timeline with some really nice images with it. Okay. Well, on I, the, go ahead. Oh, I'm Yvonne Daly. Um, I've been here 25 years, but the pictures that you were showing is very new to me because I wasn't in the area at that time, but I'm very proud of them because when I was growing up, one of my childhood dream was to be and see Teenage Frolic. <laughs> but by the time that I moved up here, Teenage Frolic was already gone. Oh. And they was talking about reconstructing the new Chabas type. So I'm very proud to see this enormous of pictures from back then because it makes it feel so good that I I'm able to see them. Great. That's good. Yeah, it's been really wonderful to, to find those images. It's, you know, when, when one shows up <laughs> in my inbox or uh, from, from an archive and I open it up, it's always really exciting. So some of these images will be in the display that you're preparing. This first uh, segregation to integration panels. Teresa, yeah. I think you might be equipped to ask answer that best. 
Right. We, we haven't gotten there yet to determine the quantity of content. We know we'll have to manage the quantity of content for the, the panels versus what's on the website, but I think it's all going to be accessible. So to your point, yes. Okay. And, and I would imagine you've studied the, the artwork that's already in the panels, uh, the, the windows, so there wouldn't be any repeating of any of that? No. And, and I know, and, um, David, well, um, no, we wouldn't be repeating. Um, and it's a really different story too. Okay. So I, I think it's, it's arriving from an interpretive messaging that we're talking about here, what it felt like during the time of say, you know, separate but equal, and then the transition that occurred to um, uh, moving into uh, integration is what we're kind of ter terming this, not just suddenly you're integrated, but it's moving towards integration. Okay. So yeah, so we'll handle that. We're looking at that now, so that'll that'll start to develop. But our first order of business was really to get at all this content. What is the timeline? What are the options? What are the images that, that we have to work with? And then how best to use them. Uh, Ms. Hinton, I, I see that you're muted. I brought you over in a different format. Can you? I hope you can hear us and and are able to unmute yourself in case you have some um, comments to share. Um. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Were you speaking to me? Miss Hinton? Hinton. Yes. Yes, I saw you. you. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to make sure that you um, could hear us and, and to make sure that you know that you can provide some comments as well. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I'm in agreement with the additional uh, picture. Um, I like that. I like that second uh, arch with the music, which would be really, really good. Can't wait to see what that's going to look like. Thanks for doing that. Um, the around the the plaza, around by the uh, carousel. The, in the uh, master plan, we do have it set up. I know it's like an option, but in the plan, I think we have it set up as chaos to go ahead and tell the, the history down there. Um, the people could uh, access either on their cell phones, but we did want a group of kiosks is down there so people can continue to hear the story, the history. But that was one thing we really did want. Not that it have to be someone there, because you know, as business people are, especially with times as this is now, having um, someone to do a tour, I mean, that's, we, we just don't know what future holds, but to make sure that that could be interactive one-on-one, -on -one, we definitely want the kiosk Dollars, so the store told on um, somebody's own one on one time, or if they're just with their families, but not necessarily have to have somebody there to tell the story. It plays a ball, is what I'm thinking of. Okay. Any other comments? Any other feedback? Good. Um, Inga, can you hear me? This is Margaret Egerton. Yes. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Good. I um I I I came in a little late, but I I like all of the presentation that has been presented so far. Okay. Thank you. And we had yes. a conversation on the phone the other day. Yes. So, yes. And I'm glad to know who V40 is. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Thank you. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
any other um, comments from anyone? This is, um, it's been a pleasure working with the community and uh, to see this evolve in a relatively short period of time. But as uh, Therese and, and Juliet mentioned, there was a lot of content to work with. So um, there's so much content that um, you have to pick and choose what to use, but it's good. That's a, that's a good thing. I'm going to bring back up the poll since um, I think we've gone through much of our presentation and discussion. Um, as we are moving forward and as the team and, and the city is moving forward uh, with the segregation to integration exhibit that will um, be included in the open and the groundbreaking ceremony for later this year, we have talked about the other concepts and we've gotten some feedback from the community on what they'd like to share. And of course, as um, the city is reminded or the city reminds us and you that the next exhibits will be driven by funding. But if you had your way, if you had your choice, um, what would you um, kind of give the next Please, yeah, and celebrate. Yeah, can I just ask Inger, how many people do we have on online to the, on the call today? We have five on the call. Oh, that's not very much of a no, it's not. <laughs> input as well as voting. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, in, not even... in, in, the, in some of the public input that we received previously, um, where we've had much more participation online, we have some who have shared with us what the preferences are, but we thought it'd be a, a good way to just kind of talk through the discussion. Again, it's going to be driven by funding and some of it may occur uh, if funds fall out of the sky um, with more than one concept at a time, but just just for dinner, general discussion. This is not a vote, um, just for uh, general discussion. I like the musical uh, gateway, the archway. Yes. I think that that would be uh, one that I would prefer to see. The John Chavis uh -huh. gateway. Yeah, it, you know, that needs to be added to the, the list here because we've got the John Chavis Gateway, but we don't have the musical. Uh, we will document it. Yeah. It sounds like we're going through a discussion anyway, as opposed to. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, the, the, uh, the polling. But any, so the musical, um, mm -hmm. okay, Gateway. Any other feedback? I also like the um, the John Chavis Gateway, and I, I I like the music part that you were talking about. And and uh, Therese and uh, Juliet, can you tell us a little bit? Uh, we had that discussion earlier today about some of the musicians that came through. Um, oh. Um, and oh yeah, um, right. So the um, musical, in addition to the teenage frolic. Uh, let me let me just pull that up just one second. Yes. So <clears throat> I, I, we do have record that Cab Calloway was in the park, that he swam in the pool there. Uh, right. We have a description that he had red swim trunks on. Um, <laughs> and so we, we were thinking in terms of the music gateway that there might be music um, um, from the Teenage Frolics. So we're also looking into some playlists because. from the Teenage Frolics. And then um, we all, are looking at some of the uh, famous uh, African-American artists of the time who probably were on that jukebox and no. some of some of you on this call may have memory of that jukebox and what your favorite song on it was so that might be interesting to hear from you yeah that would help too. yeah and so some some of those artists um, um, are, are people like uh, Little Richard, um, Ray, Henry, Charles. Ray Charles um, but but yeah, if, if you all have some memories of of specific music or songs in the park, we, we would love to hear that. What's that other one? Little Joe? Um, 
Yeah. It would be in addition to what was on Teenage Frolic uh, playlist. It would be nice to also include the African American uh, musicians uh, because we have quite a few. You know, Theolonious Monk, and Coltrane. Oh, really? Uh, just you know, yeah. a lot of uh, artists that maybe the young kids wouldn't relate to, but the adults certainly would. It would really be great to get your memories get you know maybe you could send this to luke you know send your suggestions for for those songs yeah. those artists yeah um that would be fantastic and even your memories of dances or i know there was even debutante parties that that uh, that um dj you know i mean that was pretty interesting that to hear all that went on you know um fascinating J.D., right? Yes. Lewis. J.D. Lewis. What, what an interesting person. He really was. Yeah, we found some really good, um, a documentary about him um, and um, that was put out by Capital Broadcasting. These are wonderful resources that, that they sent to us and you really started to understand what a wonderful neighborhood this is this really was yeah yeah I, I would encourage you all if you want to see some of that to um, just enter like in a Google search teenage frolics capital broadcasting and yeah. they have a whole website um, that has images and videos on it um, you might find it really interesting right it really was I live it was from uh, way back then to who, when I was a teenager, was in the 70s. Right. And I don't know how long it went after the 70s, but it was a regular every Saturday. It was the place to be. He was out there for 40 years. I didn't realize he was doing this. So. Oh, to 1983. 1983, okay. Yeah. That's a long time, though. That's yeah. A, right. That's a very long time. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I would like to say, wanted, uh, we don't have the screen up now that you wanted us to look at, but I have been in, um, well, let me just share this with you. On um, January 30th will be the annual African American Cultural Celebration at the Downtown Museum of History. Well, that's where it's located, but of course, it's going to be on Zoom. And, um, it would be really, um, it's going to be awesome. Last year, there was over 7,000 people that attended in person. So it should be at least twice that amount this year since it's going to be on Zoom. But you all might want to capture that because it's all about the cultural. And this would be the 20th year. Oh, wow. And it, it's the uh, big thing that starts off uh, Black History Month. So again, this year is going to be on January 30th. And I have been in contact uh, with the Museum of History by them being so close to us. And uh, they said they'd be very interested in um, teaming up and having some wonderful events because the, I mean, they're so long, they're so established, and they can really pull some good audience for us to help get um, different many things back into the park because I know it's going to be very busy at Dick's that's for sure but we don't want just maybe one of things I mean I saw everything on the list I don't see why all of those things can't be implemented as opposed to have one or two things I do sit on the Chavis Celebrate Committee and I, that's just a one event a year and the park is open every day so that's the whole reason that we advocated for bringing this part back alive that's set dead for 40 years. So we need many things to be happening over here. So I like what I saw on the, um, on the, but uh, I would say let's engage and have many events and many activities, not just one or two things a year. I mean, that, that's not so exciting, but we need to make it fun and exciting for everybody to Again. go over and, and uh, enjoy this part. 
And, and how can we find out, or do we have to register or anything for the, the event on January? Everything. Yes, you just register. Everything's absolutely free. Um, but just go on the Museum of History website. Okay. And because there's so many things, there's so many things that get the same um, negative comments every year. And that one comment is, there's so much to do that you just can't see it all. So that's why you need to, uh, it's, a, it's a good thing to have. But yeah. you do need to uh, go and register because it's going to be pottery. I mean, it's something for everybody. I mean, gospel music, uh, artists, musicians, uh, quilt making, pottery. I mean, it's just going to be something. Famous artists. It's just going to be spoken words. It's just going to be really, really, really good. So please, everybody go out and check it out. Enjoy yourself. Okay, thanks for that information. Thank you. Absolutely. Rachel, are you participating in any I'm of the sorry? programs? Or are you, um, are you crafting any of the programs or participate? Are you um, presenting any of the programs yourself? I sit, I myself am not, but I do sit on the board. Oh, okay. The committee. Okay. Just didn't want to miss your program. And that's why I'm <laughs> And to no, I'm not, but I'm really wanting everybody to see all the offerings. You know, yeah. uh, we've had bus loads. As a matter, there's two parking lots, and there's one parking lot that we use just church buses because that's why I have so many people come from all over North Carolina to come and attend this program every year because they want to see it, and it's just so much fun. But no, um, but. I got to uh, call uh, Captain Broadcaster and say, pull some of that more recent. Now, that's where I was at in Follies. Not the 50s, not the 60s, but the 70s. <laughs> As a regular. <laughs> that's great. But please, please do and enjoy. You guys are doing a good job. We really do appreciate you all. Please uh, don't think that we don't know the work that goes behind the scenes. We know, and just it's uh, evidence by you showing today what you've done so far. Thanks for going and pulling that extra um, up for us, you know, to add. And that would be just wonderful. We definitely want that screen, remember, with that music, because that is part of it. So let's not even count, vote on that. Let's just let that happen. Let's make that a <laughs> done deal. So vote on that. We need that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. We, and we're, we appreciate your participation, too. It's been uh, important. absolutely yes. I just wanted to add that I would love to see the Capitol broadcasting footage from the late '60s and '70s too, because I'm sure the outfits were killer. <laughs> <laughs> really? Thank you, Luke. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we were at yeah. Rose and all, <laughs> yeah. and mini skirts. And so, <laughs> that's absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else before we uh, wrap up? And, and, and as we always say, don't hesitate to follow up and send Luke or any of us comments, and especially if there are artists, as Dr. Love talked about, wanting to be included for the musical uh, considerations, please send that information as well. There's, there's one other comment I want to make on the short-term list, the a legacy of service. Uh, I think is an important one that if, if, if it, it's number five on this list, but I'd like to move it up higher as far as priorities, community priorities, the legacy of service that you have listed yeah. there. And mm -hmm. I think that's important. Okay. All right. And they were able to find, again, lots of, of uh, photos around the military yes. involvement with, uh, um, with the community. And I mentioned to our team that the, uh, the new defense secretary uh, that I guess will come in at some point in the new administration when he was making his remarks said that there were two um, two companies of military groups that in in that were that kind of informed his uh, 
career, and of course, one is always the Tuskegee Airmen, but the other was the Montfort Marines. And um, he said that was, that had an indelible, that group had an indelible mark on him. And for me, some of us are hearing about the Montfort Marines for the very first time. Um, so it was interesting to hear him say that that was an influence on his career. But that- um, can, can you, what, now spell that, what Marines? It's M-O-N-D. F-O-R-D, Monford, oh, okay. Monford Point Marines. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. well, the Marines, I have a question. I, I haven't looked it up. You talked about the airplane, the Korean War, and it being a Navy flight. But if I remember one of those things, it had Marines on uh, the, the flight. I, I, could somebody clear? You don't have to answer that tonight. Okay. But I, I remember seeing a photograph of that plane slide. That that um that was on um the number and the marine sign was on that plane. Yeah, that that's why I was asking. But on on the timeline, it's mentioned as a navy plane. So I was just curious. Uh huh. About that. I think there was some research done that resulted in that navy plane designation. Um, okay. Have you seen pictures of that uh, of that plane with that? Yes, ma'am. I'm just trying to see if I can put my finger on them right now while we're talking. Hang on a minute. I might be. Able and see the 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 plane. I did a little replica of it, and I remember the Here. numbers and Marines on that on the side of that plane. Yeah, I have a photograph showing a side view of that plane with that yes. green. So here's. Right. There we go. There you go. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So that that's why I was asking about it. So yeah, I, it I, I, a few years ago with that plane included, I thought it said Marines on it. Yeah. That's then, right. Mm -hmm. I would just like to share with everyone just this week, we did lose uh, another one, a Tuskegee Airman. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah. And I don't know his name, but I'll. Yes. Yeah. Right, we did see that. Yeah. So, prayers, you know, to his, to his family. Yeah. Mm hmm Okay. So the record may say something different, but I just wanted you to know that the what you see says Marine. So. Yes, ma'am. That's a good catch. I'm gonna do a little follow up investigation on that. <laughs> and we're in this together, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. Fine. That's okay. I think, um, Luke, if all minds are clear, mm -hmm. uh, you want to close us out and talk about next steps. Yes, yes. Um, so uh, following this meeting, we will have our last advisory committee meeting next week. And then we'll be going, uh, as we kind of tie up the loose ends here, we'll be going to the Parks Board in February and presenting the final draft plan and final exhibit design to the Parks Board. All so right, that is, that's good. Yeah, so that's right around the corner. Um, it is a public meeting and anyone can um, get uh, on and see kind of like this format, like a webinar and see the meeting um, and see the presentation. And we'll continue to post um, all the relevant documents on the project website and uh, as always, if you prefer, you can email me directly and I can send them to you. Um, and then we're gonna start, once that gets approved from Parks Board and Council, February and March, we're going to be working on fabrication of that first exhibit, the segregation to integration exhibit and have it installed in time for the ribbon cutting of the whole construction project that's underway right now. So, um, you know, that's, that's in the summertime. So uh, with that, I'd just like to thank you all and um, really appreciate spending time with us tonight. We love the feedback and the extra comments and um, you all have been so helpful through this process. So we just, it's a pleasure to work on this project. And uh, as Dr. Love said, we're in it together. And 
I think the results are, are really outstanding so far. So thank you consultant team and thank you members of the public and uh, advisory committee. And with that, we'll say good night. Luke, let me give you a heads up. On the 21st, the parking lot at Hall, our board meets at six. So I'm sure we'll be done, but if I have to leave you and go to the next meeting, know that uh, that's why. Because I okay. want an advisory board for the Valley Parks and Rec. On, I'm sorry, can you say that again? On the 21st, our meeting is at four. Is that correct? Uh, Mm -hmm. Okay, and the Park and Rec Advisory meeting begins at six. Yes. So I'm yes. saying I will I will be with you at four, but I may have to leave you if you go beyond. The time <laughs> okay. The next meeting. Well, we should that should be fine. I don't think that'll be a conflict at all. But I'm glad you could join us tonight for sure. And um, this presentation will be very similar to what we see next week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We will, we will have the same Zoom link. Uh, there's a different Zoom link for our advisory committee meeting next week. Oh, okay. And I haven't sent it yet because I just wanted to confirm that next Thursday is a good date and time for everyone. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Anything else? Thank you. Uh, uh, just one quick question. I didn't understand by... Um, at the Mother's War bench, what's going to be done there? How are we going to highlight that bench? We're looking at putting one of the um, story beacons, you know, one of those storytelling. So it's really a three-sided interpretive sign, really what it, what it is there. So we thought we'd put, you know, mark that spot and highlight that spot and add storytelling to that location. Okay, great. Okay, great. Because that will be our first entrance to the park. Yeah. Correct, because yeah, it, the North Street. that's going to be our new entrance. We're switching it from Martin Luther King to Chavis Way. So it should be something great there because it's going to be the very first thing that they see. Are you talking as far as the park. Are you talking the, about Mother's the Mother's War Bench? Oh, okay. The Mother's War oh, right. Bench. That's, that's a major, okay. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, the master plan shows the entrance on MLK going away in the future. So the primary entrance to the park will be coming down from Lenore and coming, you know, up from Chavis Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Uh, <laughs> there'll be another entrance on Chavis Way for the future Aquatic Center. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All righty. Okay. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Have thank a great you. rest of your evening. And All right.